from the Samoa server's perspective, and we, I speak as print media, uh, we see online as firstly an opportunity and um, also a big, big threat. Now, um, I don't need to tell you, if you're working in the print, uh, a lot of the uh, companies, a lot of the big newspapers overseas have downsized massively over the last, they've been shutting down papers. I mean, the last time I checked in New Zealand, I think there were 23, 24 papers that were shut down. So when you talk about challenges, this is what I mean. I would like this word to be defined a bit more because if you're talking about challenges, it's not just challenges of social media that we're facing now. In terms of print media, uh, at the moment, online is a massive, massive challenge. And I've got to say from the Sam Observer perspective, we're still trying to adapt to it. And we're still trying to find ways. And you know, I'm, I'm happy to say that we've got some really exciting stuff coming up in terms of trying to keep up with the online challenges. Which brings me to um, you know, um, some of the things that, like I said, you know, we can go on all day and talk about the, um, what's happening today. But I think for me, the, I'll, I'll only talk about three points uh, this morning. Um, firstly, is, it's the, the challenge that we see uh, from a media perspective is the attitude of our um, readers, and not just readers, but our, our consumers, if you may, may use the word. Uh, we live in an age where now, um, if you are a social media person, uh, it's the hits that counts, not necessarily the details. Um, what I mean by that is quite often now people are just judging a story on its headline and that's it. You know, they click, uh, read the headline, move to the next story. Uh, it's, it, it's, they, they don't care about the details. Um, and that's, for us in the media, that's a big, big challenge because a, lot, a big part of our role is actually to get those details. And uh, when people don't start reading the details, you, you begin to worry because all they care about is a headline. You, and quite often, if you read the, 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 you know, the debates on whether it's Facebook, uh, whatever, people only care about the headline. So if, if the headline says someone is dead, you know, that's, that's, that's the only thing that's, that people are going to care about. So um, that's the first challenge. Uh, the second challenge is what I would um, refer to in... In speaking to you guys, please, I, 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 I say this to my newsroom all the time, um, it's, I call it an internal wound. Um, I think our media people are spending so much time on social media, I think really they should get off their butts and do some real work. Um, what I mean by that is our media is becoming really lazy, uh, we're just picking off the clicks, uh, we're just picking off what someone said on Instagram, we're just picking off on some, you know, it's, it's valid news, it's, uh, it's public, but still, I think there are better stories out there that should be investigated. And if anything, in this room today, I really want to stress that. I, I think the role of the media in getting out there and getting those stories, um, it's, not, it's not pretty work. It's, uh, it's not, uh, you know, it's not going to make you look good, but that's what we're here to do. So, um, really, uh, our media colleagues, get off Facebook. Go and do some real work. Um, your bosses are paying you to go out and investigate those stories. That's what they want. Um, so, too many, too, too many times they're so preoccupied with what's said on this on Facebook and what's said, get off Facebook, go and find the facts, go and find the documents, go and find what you need to find to get those stories out there. I mean, if you have to piss off some government people, go and do it. The last point I want to raise, um, uh, again, it goes kind of relates to uh, what um, I said earlier, it's about attitude. Now, with online, um, with, you know, social media and all, it's, it's a free for all, really. Um, there's absolutely no way to regulate the information that's getting out there, which means uh, the truth doesn't really matter. Um, you can basically, for example, if I'm looking at Sherelle, I don't like how she looks, I can basically go on right now, create a story and say, Sherelle, I saw her uh, with, with uh, you know, I, I, she, she came this morning, I can, this is what I can basically say, she came this morning, she was black, and she started painting her face, she's now white, and, and, and spread it. You know what? Nobody cares. And they, all they're ever going to see is, this is Sherelle, you know, and that's the danger that we've got now with Facebook uh, online medium, which brings me back to the point of journalists needing to get out there and do some real work. Because what I'm finding and what we are seeing is that the excitement, I think, I'm hoping that the excitement and the face of social media <laughs> excitement and people thinking that um, will eventually be over and people will come back to the traditional media and say, this is why we need to have journalists who are trained go out there and get the real information. At the moment, everybody thinks they can be a media person. It's mm -hmm. not true. And I'm here to tell you that. It's taken me so long and I'm learning as we go. These, my colleagues on, on, on my side, they, it's taken them years <coughs> to learn. And we're still learning, we're not perfect. 
So we're still learning, but I think it's, like I said, it goes back to what I said at the beginning, it's an opportunity and it's a threat. Unfortunately, at this stage, it's more of a threat than an opportunity. I agree with what um, Mata'afa has been saying, uh, but that many years ago, talking about media freedom and uh, Media Freedom Day, um, I think Kenny will remember that around 1982, when JAWS was really in its infancy, uh, the then government, and still the government now, HRPP, is on record as saying that um, this whole idea of um, the freedom of expression and media freedom is a foreign concept. It's nothing from Samoa, it's against uh, the Samoa. Now with what's happening on social media, I think uh, 30 years after, in 2018, and with the challenges that we are seeing on the developments of um, the social media, Facebook and social media, I'm bringing that notion back and say, can we look back to what HRPP said 36 years ago? This is a foreign concept that will actually be destructive to Samoan society. Does it have any merit? That's the question I'm posing, and I think we can discuss it. And looking at uh, what's happening now with the, all the malicious um, communication that is now going on social media, Facebook especially, I think we need to um, look at all those challenges and um, try and, and address them. I think about two years ago, we were sitting in this hotel with uh, Rudy here and other executive members of JAWS, and then when we were getting up to leave, <coughs> we got a message on Facebook saying that our former head of state, the former head of state, um, has passed away in the United States. And I think the Sabali, the government newspaper, was the first one to ring us and said, oh, have you seen that uh, the head of state has passed away in the, in the United States? And I said, oh. Yeah, you need to check it. Can you check it? Can you check it? And I think it goes back to um, what Kenny was talking about. We need properly and well-trained journalists, real journalists, compared to citizen journalists. So I think we should not be taken with the flow of what that comes on Twitter and, and the social media. We can use it as just as a lead but we need to follow them up. We need to check and check and check the truth of these things. Because afterwards, we rang up the, the office of the head of state and he said, no, he's still here. He's walking around the house. <laughs> but that's, that's a reality. And how, and how many people have we, have we declared that they are dead? But they, I, I know one of them is the owner of one of the, the undertakers here in town, uh, Sefo Pau. Somebody actually ran a story that he died because they took it off. Um, of, of social media. But those are the challenges, the real challenges, and we all know what's happening with social media and the malicious communication that is going through and how it's been def uh, defamatory and it's defaming people. And the, and the most unfair part of it all is that we can't see the faces of these people. We don't know their identity. So getting back to the point I was saying about media freedom and the freedom of expression, and what HRPP said in 1982, when we had one of the ceremonies like this, we had at the old Felo Imauso Hall, which is no longer there now, and the claim was made, and it's on record, they were saying that this is a foreign idea, and I think the Prime Minister actually said in the Parliament that media freedom is, and the freedom of expression is a foreign idea that will have major repercussions to the uh, social fiber of our society in Samoa. But looking at what's happening now with social media, it's a question for us all to think about. Is it, is it a fair comment or what do we need to do? But I think we're getting back to one of the sessions later on where we look at how to address the issue. I think one of the responsibilities should be with those who are actually the companies who provide the service. They should be part of the, of the solution. Um, in creating and giving our public awareness uh, programs so that at least try to show people the impact and the service providers should have a responsibility not only taking the money from those who use the service but they should pay for part of the public awareness and the educational uh, programs so that at least we can try and solve some of the issues with regards to the negative 
uh, impact of social media on our society. Standards of practice, and this has been mentioned both by Mata Afana Polo, is standards of practice. We go back to verification, um, which is really a basic principle of journalism. Are they ver verifying the information? Then you're just another um, citizen um, putting out false information. Um, the other thing is the dilution of the definition of a journalist. Just because you work for a media organization doesn't make you a journalist. You have to actually get some training, get some mentorship, actually put in the ears and understand what standards of practice are to make it happen. Um, to me, the main challenge for press freedom is how do we address the violations of press freedom? How are their rights being protected? If their rights are being protected, um, how do they, sorry, if their rights are violated, how can they address it? And that's where the Media Council should come in. And the Media Council needs to be strengthened um, and needs to do its job in order for it to be useful. Because as long as the Media Council is not uh, being active, and I know I'm shooting myself in the foot here, but um, when it comes to matters of governance, we as council members don't have a say in it. Uh, so it's our own, own, it's too long, I'm a fainga, and actually, the role of the media council. So that when people's rights are being violated, they have a SMA tangi, a SMA tua yai. So as long as that's Lela whatsoever reintroduced, the libel, uh, criminal libel, and I really feel like the whole reason why that's been reintroduced is because we didn't um, enact the media council regulations early. Because okay, we'll put this on again. So Tosi, mm. thank you for that question. I really feel like there is a role here for standardizing, mm. for enforcing the culture uh, standards of practice for journalism, enforcing, and I think Chores has played an instrumental role in ensuring that the code of ethics um, and standard of practice are being um, promoted across the media. But how do you then enforce that? When I the code of practice, but if I fail to enforce, what about mm. our new media organizations? Should there be an avenue for them to then just get a crash course? I am Senai Tsangatalaya who received education in other areas. So, for instance, I have a Pesaule, the Bachelor of Science or a Bachelor of Accounting, fear journalist. Ah, mm. Do we have a three week course to say, okay, these are media laws? If you want to write, if you want to report in the mainstream media or, or rules like it's our night observing. So I really feel like uh, for me, the challenges is standards, uh, mm. regulation. Um, and so it's, it's also self-regulation um, and ensuring that we do protect the <laughs> rights of the people we write about. Because mm. it's not a one-way street. We have to respect. And the whole reason why we have standards is to govern the rights of those that we, we do report on as well. Mm.